Hey guys, this one's for anyone who knows they're just not made for the corporate world. And they've been trying different side hustles, but they just haven't gotten the traction that they wanted. We've got a special guest, Joshua Good today, who's done a bunch of different side hustles and businesses, such as owning a film studio, owning a recording studio, working at the YMCA, and even having a construction company, and it's found more wholesaling traction than any of these other businesses. So if you don't know what wholesaling is, it's a way to earn big checks by finding distressed properties and then passing them off to an investor who gives you a finder's fee simply for finding these really, really great deals. And it's a low initial investment, does take some effort, but can have a big payday. And so I'm David Letko. I created a process that's helped 10,000 people close 10,000 deals over the last seven years called Deal Machine. And my co-host is here, Ryan Haywood who took a 14-day wholesaling challenge and made 8,500 bucks, and now he's done 419 deals in St. Joseph, Missouri. And you guys are going to love this episode. So Joshua, welcome to the show. And I'm curious, how did you make $14,000 on your very first wholesale deal? Well, hi everyone. I'm Joshua, like he said before. Um, how did I make $14,000? Well, it... <laughs> I guess it started back when sitting in a room trying to figure out what I was going to do next. Um, This was during the time period of COVID, you know, film wasn't moving like it was before things were slowing down quite a bit. And, you know, I just was like, what's next, what's next, what's next, you know, I'm a little bit older than a lot of the young guys in the game. So I felt like I was uh, late, you know, um, so stressing on that, stressing on other things, you know, just had a, our second child. Um, so there was a lot going on at that time and I was on YouTube and I just came across this video, uh, Brett Daniels, TTP, and just talking about wholesaling. I was interested, finally signed up for the course and got straight to it. Now, how I came across that first deal was a uh, Thai landlord. That was how I pulled. That was the first list I pulled. Um, I did. I got the tired landlord list and I started calling. Uh, And so tired landlord is just like landlords who have owned the property for like at least 15 years or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. I think it was like 15 plus years at the time. Um, But yeah, so I got on the call, um, talked to the seller. He was like, hey, I'm interested in selling. And I locked this property up. I was excited and I was like, okay, what do I do next? You know? Uh, so I'm sitting there with this contract thinking like, what do I do next? So I hit up a friend of mine and I started sending out this contract to all these, well, to these people I thought were buyers at the time. And, um, you know, I got a lot of feedback. I had locked this contract, I believe up for $110,000. And I got a lot of feedback from people saying, no, you know, I need this at 80. I need this at 90. I need this at this. And in the back of my head, I'm like, shit, I just paid $8,000 for the program. Uh, I locked up this deal and everyone was saying that, you know, they need this deal 20000 less than what I just got it locked up for. Mm. Uh, you know, I'm thinking like, this ain't going to work, you know, uh, first deal. Uh so finally, I got enough feedback to where I'm like, okay, this still doesn't work at that 110 price that I got it locked up for. So I ended up calling the seller and just telling him like, hey, uh, you know, I apologize. I said I can move this thing for you and it it's just not going to work. The feedback I'm getting is not what I expected. You know, this is totally my fault. And he goes like, what do you need it for? And I'm like, uh, at that point, I really did. I knew that. I had buyers wanted at 90, but I was like, I don't, I didn't know, but I always knew that Brent would be like anchor, anchor, anchor. So I was like $60,000. And he was like, you know, I can't really, that's, that's tough. This, that, this, that. And I'm like, okay, just, you know, just get back with me. He eventually ended up calling me back and he was like, Hey, I can do $70,000. If you can move it for 70, you know, we can, we can make this work. So I got it retraded, got Go ahead. Oh, I was, you said anchor, anchor, anchor. What, give us some idea what that, what that, go back to that offer. What was, what was the anchor procedure here? So with the anchor procedure, you know, 
when you have a deal and you know what your buyers wanted at. So say I have this deal at 110, like I was saying, and I knew my buyers wanted at 90. So with the anchor procedure, you kind of want to go back to your seller and give them a lower number than what you actually needed at, hoping that mm-hmm. when they come back to you that it's going to be at that number that you really needed at. Um, yeah. So in that process, I anchored at 60, knowing that I can move it at 90. So if he came back at 85, it wouldn't have mattered. I would have been like, hey, let's just get it yeah. done. Got Proof it. of concept, yeah. you know. Um, But yeah, so funny story is I got it there and I started pushing out to the buyers again. And they came back, oh, I need this at this. And you know, just like, what the? Like, I thought, like, this is going to work at this price. Jeez. Um. And that's when Alec came in to help me move it. Funny story. So how did you know Alec? Alec and I, Alex. we met on a um, a YouTube podcast type deal called Wholesale Hotline. Um, sent him a message, basically. I actually, in the comments? Well, actually, you said, were both watching it and he was in the yeah, comments? It was actually his business partner at the time, uh, which is Seth. And we, uh, we got together, like, a couple days later after meeting on wholesale hotline um met up at a we work and i've been knowing them guys for like, i want to say a month or two prior to this deal and uh they were doing the same thing i was doing you know so i was like hey let me give them a shout they've always said they had buyers so i sent it to alec and uh so he sent it out for me and called me the next day he's like hey i got somebody hey guys quick interruption If you're planning on partnering with another wholesaler in order to sell your deal faster, that's a fantastic idea. I'd highly recommend using a contract to make everything legit before the other wholesaler would market your property. I've set up a link for you to download an example joint wholesaling, co-wholesaling contract, and it's dealmachine.com slash JV. So you can look at an example. I am in no way an attorney or providing legal advice, but it's my general impression that it is illegal to market a property if you do not have the equitable interest in that property, meaning if another person will partner on a deal that you have under contract, you first need to have that joint venture contract in place to stay compliant. Now we'll return back to the episode. And the funny thing is, is that the person that he had gotten uh i had sent it to that person prior but yeah so alec had marketed a certain way where it brought the attention to this buyer where he was like oh i actually like this deal uh it was the same deal but alec marketed differently and yeah did you have a relationship with that buyer prior um somewhat uh come to find out that buyer was in the same community as us which is sub two community uh mm-hmm. so yeah he had a prior relationship with them i didn't i just messaged him on facebook and was like hey what's up do you remember what the differences were between how you marketed the property versus how alec marketed the property yes it was he marketed was it? i marketed it as a 2-1 he marketed it as a 3-1 because there was an extra bedroom there but i didn't know if i could count that as a bedroom or not at the time uh Come to find out, you could. Yeah. And how did you market that? And how did he market it? Like, where where did he send this out? Did he oh. have an email list? or? So with him, he sent it to just friends that he knew. Like I said, that him and this guy already knew each other. From yeah, just via text message or something yeah, like that. Yeah, via text message. With me, uh, I met that same guy um, through Facebook. Okay. So yeah, I sent it to him on Facebook. Um uh, Alex sent them just a straight up text message. I made this pretty old template with the house on it and everything else. And Got it. Hey, well, that's pretty resourceful of you to find somebody in the comments of content that you were into and you guys figured out you both lived in Austin, Texas, it sounds yeah. like. So you decided to meet up and then you found a deal, but you didn't know exactly how you're going to sell it. So you worked with somebody that had more experience. Mm-hmm selling these deals and then you ended up splitting some of the profits is that right yep that's exactly what happened he basically disclosed the deal which is finding a buyer 
disposition. He provided right? the value mm -hmm. to you that was worth splitting it for. 100%. And what was your split on that? So on that one, I it was a 20K assignment. Uh, now that buyer- That's the finder's fee. That Yeah, that was the finder's fee. Uh, now, the, the funny thing about that one was that that buyer texted me that morning. Now, I didn't know Alex, Alex said he had the buyer for it. It was so, right? So that buyer texts me that morning. He's like, hey, I want that property. And I'm like, okay, well, Alex says it's so. Now this buyer wants a property. I sell it. Alex is this much. I sell it with this buyer. Not knowing that the buyer is the mm -hmm. exact same person. <laughs> Dude, but uh, with that win, I Alex, like, I have like a written. No, a, we did. We didn't at the time. We were just buddies. And like he knew that I would pay him no matter what. But anyways, on that one, uh, I paid Alec five thousand, and I took fourteen thousand. Nice, gotcha. Yeah. That's a nice split, very generous split that he gave you. Because typically, some people will even do fifty percent each. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we do that now. We do that now. Yeah. Nice. All right. Was there? Um, all right. So you pulled the tired landlord list. Did you did you cold call or do you send out mail? I cold call. You cold called. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you got the tired landlord list, you got their phone numbers and were you using your cell phone or did you have a, a some type of like automated dialer that helped you dial these numbers? Yeah. At the time I had, um, I want to say it was Mojo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the time I believe it was Mojo. Yeah. Mojo dialer. And then what did you say when somebody said hello? Hey, this is Josh Good. Uh, I was driving past your house and I noticed that it looked vacant. This one specifically because I was actually driving for dollars too with Deal Machine. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. Hey, I was driving past your house. I noticed that it looked vacant. I was just wondering if you were, had any plans with it. And he's like, "Actually, it's not vacant. We have someone living there, but I want to sell it." I was like, "Oh, great! I'm your guy." Very good. Amazing. And that's how it started off. Now, did you ever feel like this pit in your stomach where you're like, I don't know what to offer this guy? Yeah. Well, how'd you deal with that? Because I still feel that all the time. 100%. Uh, he said he wanted to sell, and I believe by that day, I spent probably like the next 15 hours watching Jamil's comping <laughs> to figure out how to comp a property. Because I Comping, how to figure out the value of a property. Yeah. Yep. How to basically fill out the value and all um, but so, what I love though is that you took action before you knew all the steps to the process. Yeah. You didn't you didn't get too intimidated by the comping and offering process that didn't prevent you from pulling that list and reaching uh -huh. out to start conversations. And I think that's a amazing takeaway for good reminder for me, anything new I'm starting, but definitely if somebody's listening that wants to get their first deal, I love that you took action without even knowing all of the steps. Yeah, because you can just learn so much when you have a deal right in front of you. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, if you know you want to quit your job in the next three months, make sure you're subscribed to this podcast because we've got some incredible frameworks with step-by-step -step instruction that you're not going to want to miss. Also, leave us a rating and review to let us know your favorite parts and why you want to get financial freedom. Amazing. So so you're doing, for the for the most part, how long did you stick with um, the tired landlord list. Did you get multiple deals out of it? Yeah, I believe I held another. I ended up getting another deal. Um, and it and with me pulling the multiple the tired landlord, that's when you know I was doing direct to seller, basically reaching out to the seller, saying that they want to sell their homes. Uh, mm -hmm. and during that time period, I didn't. Really, I was getting a deal. I got a deal and I had another one that was coming. It was like two or three months later. Uh, but I didn't see the vision. I, I couldn't like see it clearly of how like this was going to work for um, the next five years. Sustainability. Yeah. Exactly. So that kind of, that kind of scared me in a little bit. Um, so I was still in that state of like, is this going to work? You know, I made 20,000 on, I mean, 14,000 on a deal. But yet at that point, I was still like, is this still something that I can make work um, with how I was doing things? Uh, so I did that for probably after that deal, probably for another, probably for another 
eight to nine months. Um, and then I end up switching to director agent outreach. Yeah. Tell walk us through direct to agent or a lot of people refer to that as agent outreach. What, what is that? What is that? What are you doing? So with agent outreach, you're pretty much getting a list of agents instead of sellers. And instead of reaching out to the sellers asking if you, do they want to sell their home? You're reaching out to agents that possibly already have people that do want to sell their home. Um, Mm -hmm. Are they active listings that they're, that they've got? uh, Some of them do have active listings, but I primarily go after the off market or pocket listings. Uh, So I'm calling them up. Hey, um, you know, I, I was curious if you had anything coming up um, that was in this original condition that could use some work. Uh, you know, a lot of times I get the answer no, but and they may be like, yeah, I do have something that's on market, you know, and they send me that and I'll cop it sometimes to see if it's a deal or not, but majority of the time it's, it doesn't work out for us. Um, but yeah, with agent outreach, I think I start to thrive more with that rather than the seller outreach simply because of um, it was quicker for me to build a momentum, which allowed me to see the vision a lot easier. Uh So did the agents ever say like, hey, are you actually buying this property or are you a wholesale? You know? Yeah, I get that question all the time. Yeah. How do you answer that question? That's good. So it depends on how it's asked. Some agents ask as if they already know, and I tell them, like, hey, you know, uh, wholesaling is just, you know, uh, an investment route that we take depending on the situation. We do assign some deals here and there, but I am looking for my next fix and flip, which I am. Um, But sometimes it's just be like, no, I'm an investor and I'm looking for my next deal. I find at the end of the day, all agents really care about is it is that you're closing things that they put you on. Um, yeah. They really don't care if you're really wholesale or not. They just want to make sure that you close the deal that you said you are. Do you have to have different verbiage in the contract with an agent that allows you to wholesale it? Uh, no, I just use the track contract. Okay. Yeah. What explain? Explain what that is. The check contract is the contract provided by the, uh, I believe, the real estate board out here in Texas. Um, wow. Yeah, so we just use the the traditional real estate contract rather than using a wholesaling contract. Is Which it already are are you already? Does it have verbiage in it that allows you to assign that contract? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, okay. You know, all all. Uh, real estate's assignable. Um, they just make it a big deal when that's the only thing that you're trying to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So, are there any other, um, I would say things that I thought that was really helpful the way that you communicated with the agent about you are a wholesaler and you communicated, you know, you found the agent, they really only care about you closing on the deal. So, if you are wholesaling the property, you know, you, you definitely just want to be able to communicate that in a way that makes them feel confident. You're going to, you're going to close. Exactly. Right. So if you're, exactly. new, if you're new, I know I would have definitely felt super unconfident in myself about my ability to close on it. Um, you went into this strategy having already closed on some deals and knowing some friends in the WeWork. Yes. It's kind of like a WeWork mafia in Austin. Right? There's like a bunch of wholesale people there that hang out. Hopefully we take over here soon. Love it. So do you um, do you let that agent represent both sides and then make money on your part of the transaction and theirs? Uh, I kind of, it depends on the deal. If there's room for it, I mean, hey, go ahead, you know. Um, but majority of the time, if an agent isn't representing the seller, we allow them to represent us. If they don't want to represent either party, we just give them a referral fee. How would you get in contact with an agent that's not the listing agent? 
about a property like this? Or why so, would you in the first place? Wouldn't you just go straight to the listing agent? Yes, but sometimes, so we are doing uh, a text outreach right now. So times, sometimes we do come across uh, agents that only represent buyers and they'll let us know like, hey, I represent buyers, this, that, this, that. And we let them know, hey, if you come across something, you know, I'll be happy to take a look at it. Um, yeah. And you can represent us as well. Okay. Do you bring your own contract when you're buying a property that is listed for sale with an agent? Or do you use the traditional Texas contract for buying a real estate property? The traditional Texas real estate contract. Okay. And does that by default, like let you assign it? Yes. How, like Josh, uh, how, how do you feel like, uh, does your life feel different now? You, you've had a second kid. Have you had any more kids since you started wholesaling? You're, you know, like what, how has wholesaling, you know, changed your life? If, if any, uh, man, it's changed my life dramatically. Um, I wake up every day and I'm like, dang, this is crazy. And it's not so much because of the money that I'm making. It's because of the the change that I'm enforcing on myself with the books that I'm reading, with the like the daily morning walks that I'm doing. You know, um, I, I, I was starting to do all that stuff to be like, okay, I need to get up early so I can be the first one to get the deal. I need to do this to... So I can get more deals, more deals. And at the end of the day, I find that rather than the deals, it's ac actually helping my life at home, my life in the office, uh, just myself. Like I'm growing um, and wholesaling has helped me grow quite a bit. That's amazing, man. Yeah. It's uh, something I've noticed as well, like working on fitness. You said you're working on walks. Uh -huh. And that just kind of translates over into other yeah. things you do. The more discipline I get, the more I feel that other things naturally, I want them to be yes. excellent as mm -hmm. well and to do them with rhythm and discipline. Facts, facts. That's amazing, man. It's helped your life at home too. Yeah. So a few things that Josh mentioned, for you guys listening, he mentioned that he pulled the tired landlord list. So I wanted to bring you guys, if you want to know more about that, check out episode 78, the top 10 motivated seller lists and how to get them. And also, there's a guy named Philip. I'm not sure if we mentioned it, who works in the same we work as Josh. And uh, he was episode 57, how Philip made $35,000 on his first deal and has done 80 deals since then. So if you wanted another window into, into who's Josh is hanging out with here in Austin, uh, that could be a good one. Uh, thank you so much, Josh. I really yeah, appreciate you sharing your story today. Yes, sir. And I appreciate the invite. Loved it. Thanks for listening to the Deal Machine Real Estate Investing Podcast. Please leave us a review and follow along wherever you're listening to your podcast.